Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's uh, been a few years since I last uploaded the video of the uh, open box impression of the Pro, Pro Break uh, clip-ons. Um, I finally decided that it's time to do the swap, but I'd like to share with you some of my thought process and the reason why it took me that long. First, I got this bike brand new. I wanna get used to the handlebar position before I make a determination whether uh, I should go with the clip-ons or not. Uh, so I rode it last summer, had a good time, but it still felt the handlebar uh, from the stock still give me a little bit of pressure in my wrist and it, it hurt, it hurt me. Uh, the idea for me anyway, comfortably, is that uh, I need more sweep anger. Now, if you recall or watched squash uh, pro sport player, when they hold the wrist racket, the hand is always in this position. So when you're holding the bike, you always want it to be in that same direction. So I find the OEM is a little bit too perpendicular and the pressure on the wrist for long ride duration, it, it causes a lot of pain. So I come to the determination that that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna swap out the OEM handlebar for the clip-on, the uh, pro brake uh, clip-on that I bought them and show you guys. Now, there were a couple of thought process in making that determination. First and foremost, when you remove the handlebar, you are left with this um, triple plate, top triple plates. And as far as I know, there isn't any aftermarket top triple plates that are made specifically for the Tourno V4, at least for the year 21 and up. Uh, so if you don't have anything to cover that spot, you will have that two empty spot below here. And it, it look off. So uh, through my research, I, I, I've been told and, and saw that people say, well, if you have the EvoTech uh, phone mount, which currently right now I have, that the two space here actually will go on top and it fits right into the two um, holes that would be left over from removing the handlebar. So I got confirmation from that. And as a result, I, I am going with, uh, with the EvoTech uh, phone mounts. The other two uh, thoughts behind that is this, here. Now this gives me actually a lot of uh, headaches to be honest. So you have the uh, leftover from the OEM mirrors that you removed and you have this perch here okay and you have this M10 I believe uh, thread left behind. Yes I bought the you know the uh, uh, what you call them um, um, the cover for it and, and it works very well. Keep this if you decide that to go with, you know, the more fancy um, mirrors such as the uh, Rizoma, right? They have the fancy mirror and you need this OEM uh, perch with uh, the left behind uh, mirrors mount for it. But if you were like me, just like you see it here, uh, go with the bar and mirror, then that thing you don't need it. It kind of is eyesore to be honest with you. Um, so I did some research how I go about to, to, to get rid of that. Um, believe it or not, I went and uh, looked at the RSV4 uh, purge for the clutch lever. And yeah, it costs a little bit, 65 US so out to 95 Canadian. Uh, but the idea is that you will get rid of this bump or that leftover thread from the OEM mirrors. And the same thing for the um, master cylinder. Uh, I bought the uh, the clip from the RSV4, and eventually replacing it would get rid of this um, mount right here. So those were the things that really held me back from installing because I was a little bit undecided. But when you go through your process of determining whether you want to swap the handlebar to a clip-on, do take those into consideration because uh, it will help you in the long run. Uh, so with that, uh, I did another step uh, of 
looking into what kind of tools I needed uh, to be successfully swap out the uh, handlebars. And I will show you over there of the tools that I got and I will provide the link in the video for you to, to, um, to make notice of that and perhaps purchase them. Um, but as you can appreciate, when you're removing all of this mechanism here, there are a couple of screws uh, to keep the, um, the controls intact, not rotating. So therefore, you need to screw or rather drill into the clip on so that the screw can be tightened. There's a tool for that. Um, and, and so, yep, I will show you over here. I will walk you over it of what's the uh, uh, tool I have in terms of uh, what I bought and how I prepare for the um, eventual uh, swap on. So here is the pro brick uh, clip on set. And as I mentioned, this is the uh, RSV4 uh, clutch purge, okay? So there you see it. It does not have that uh, OEM mirror uh, spot for it. So uh, I'm going to change that entirely out and swap it out onto my current one right here, okay? Uh, so that's what I will do. Um, and again, this is the clip on for the master cylinder. Uh, again, that is from the RSV4 part. This is the jig that allows you to drill um, the hole into the handlebar to allow the screw on of the OEM controls. Uh, AF1 Racing sells this, and I think uh, it, it goes out of stock pretty, uh, pretty. Uh, well, so do get yourself one. I will provide a link for that. But this is the tool you need to help you with the drilling. So my plan as well is that when I remove all the OEM stuff, um, I want to keep the stock counterweight insert in there. The insert has an M18 by 1.5 millimeter thread. So how will I fit that insert onto the pro brake handlebar is a great question. And it's one of which gives me quite a bit of headache. So I did my own research. And in order to do that, you need a few things. You obviously need a drill bit, a drill head to drill that um, a hole in there to allow you to tap the 18 um, by 1.5 um, thread so that you can screw on the OEM counterweight inserts. So here is what you see, the tap. That is, uh, of course, China's made, can easily be bought from Amazon. Now, the important piece here is the drill bit. So what drill bit would fit for an M18 by 1.5? Now, if you do a quick research, uh, the proper drill bit for that is a 16.5 millimeter. And this is what the drill bit is. Okay, this is the size for that drill bit. The idea is once I install on it, I will use a hand drill and drill um, about an inch and a half or so into the handlebar and then use the M18 by 1.5 uh, millimeter tap to tap in order to create a thread for that uh, insert. So key info to, uh, um, to make note of that. And of course, I am a little bit undecided on which um, grip to use. So I, I bought and have a couple of grips here. This were from my race bike uh, grips. Of course, uh, Rantha is, is a well-known uh, grip for the race community. So I'm thinking it may be uh, one of that. Or I go with the um, Rizoma here. Or with the driven axis um, uh, grip here. Uh, a piece of advice on the uh, driven products though. I, I, 
bought a set and installed on my former bike. The issue with the driven is that they have this metal, um, I would say metal circular thing that does not allow ease of forcing the um, grip onto the handlebar because you don't have much maneuver room to uh, to move around. So my experience with driven um, grips are that it's so difficult to get it on because of this metal um, thing that kept the, uh, the, the, the grip intact when it is installed. So that's, that's one piece of advice I, I, I would caution you if you do decide to go with the um, um, driven product uh, grip bar. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're all gonna do the install of the clips on. Uh, I'll be walking you through a few of those. Um, I would say, uh, you know, try and errors from me. Uh, but yes, before you do that though, I highly recommend it that uh, you want to measure the stock size relative to uh, your body position. So what I do is I measure from the end of the uh, uh, handlebar uh, down to, I would say the center of the tank. And of course, right at the peg where you would uh, uh, rest your feet and back up again. So measure that triangle. And I also measure the height of the OEM handlebar from the end of the uh, handlebar all the way down to the floor, perpendicular as much as you can, and get a get a sense of that measurement uh, to see how it is because you want to compare to uh, the final work that you do. And before you begin your install, what I normally do is uh, you know cover all the uh, uh, the paint area with a, a piece of cloth so that no tools can be dropped and scratched on it or walking around and, and, and that kind of thing. So it's a good practice to do it. Uh, so I got this prepared and I'm going to cover all my electronics and sensitive area that uh, uh, potentially uh, that I could scratch. So preventing that, it's a good idea. And of course, picking out your tools, making sure you got the right tools for the job. So this is an M5 hexagon. Uh, or Allen key that uh, I would use to uh, uh, undo the uh, end bar here. So be careful with the the mirror. You know this uh, OEM insert here. Uh, like I say, the thread size M eighteen by one point five millimeter. But there's also a, a thread that uh, goes into it. Uh, a lot of folks don't know what's the size of that thread. And when you buy, you know, bar end. Uh, knuckle or boy and mirrors and you want to know specifically what that thread size is it actually is m6 okay so look for anything that has an m6 thread uh, or uh, i guess the bolt that would bolt thread right into it hence the reason i want to keep this one in my new uh, clip on so the next one is removing this uh, weight insert uh, this is a 24 mil. So the trick that I learned uh, from watching, uh, I guess, YouTube video from one uh, to another is that the removal of this um, um, grip so what's the best way to do it? So I've been told or uh, saw the most effective way is to use a Phillips uh, screwdriver. Uh, why? Because it has this shape that it does not scratch the uh, handlebar when you insert the inside of it and you pry the space along it. Had you use a flat um, screwdriver, when you go in, that sharp edge will scratch the surface of the a handlebar so you don't want that to happen to you and now um, here's the thing the best way to remove the uh, I guess the glue or the adhesive in the grip is brake cleaner apparently so I did not uh, know that but I saw a YouTube video and it works very well so hopefully it's gonna work for me as well
do it there. Just uh, squeeze it in. Just try to wrap around to it. And uh, try to squeeze in and spray. Now, before you spray anything, you make sure you have something to cover it because it's gonna go right onto your, your bike. So a uh, good idea is to use some of the uh, shop powder. So we really have a box here. And I'm going to cover that area just in case I misspray it and it go over to the control side. I don't want that on my brick cleaner. So I'm just gonna pry it a little bit and try to fix the uh, nozzle in there. But be careful with your eyes as well, so. Double spray, walk through it a little bit. Obviously there's stuff gonna uh, go through underneath uh, the floor there. So you want to have something to catch those uh, there. So, yep, so apparently with that, I'm be able to slide it out like this. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? So there you have it. Now, OEM stuff. I don't need that, give this a nice wipe. So as you can see, no scratch. <laughs> what a magical, magical. There you go. Uh, next step is to remove uh, some of the controls here and um, we take it from there. I am going to try to do the same thing on the, uh, no, nope, I don't think I need to do that, but I still need to remove the uh, grip from the plastic uh, roller in there. Um, so I'm going to try and do it. In the YouTube video that I was watching, uh, they didn't do it for the, for the, um, um, thought aside because I, I would imagine it's not as straightforward uh, so learning from a mistake over there and there's something to cover below here so using the same approach I'm just gonna slowly gently squeeze the uh, Philip screwdriver just to create that gap to allow the uh, brick cleaner to go in and generate that. So, again, be careful with this. Couple squeeze. Now, the screw for this one here, it's a, I don't know, it's a T-Rex or whatever they call it. It has a star like, uh, but it's the size 20, if you can pick that out. So after doing the online researches and actually removing the bolts from the control groupings on the handlebar, um, I came to realize the exact size for them. Now, I want to point out though that the uh, bolt size for the throttle control as well as the traction adjuster are the same. And the bolt size for that is an M4 by 07. The bolt size for the starter uh, as well as the control grouping are the same and it's an M5 by 08. So you want to drill the uh, hole exactly to those size in order to fit the bolt back into the new handlebar so that it does not move up and down when you control them. I'm going to show you over there exactly uh, what it is. 
and so that you have an idea what I'm talking about. So right here is um, the uh, bolts were removed from the uh, control groupings on the uh, OEM handlebar. Um, they are separated by the tap drill, left side for the left bolt, rather left uh, uh, control grouping, right side for the right control grouping. So as I say, the uh, throttle control um, and the uh, uh, traction control adjuster have the same bolt size and they are M407. Similarly, the uh, uh, starter control as well as the uh, control grouping have the same bolt size and they are M508. So there you have it. Now, I came across on the forum from uh, Aprilia forum that there is a thread and the gentleman actually provide a very helpful template that you could use uh, to uh, exactly locate where the uh, tap or the drill of the hole should be. And he suggests that if you cut out the, um, the dash line there and wrap it around the handlebar, you should be able to know where exactly to drill the hole. And he even suggested the uh, uh, um, SAE drill bit size for them, okay? Again, right here on the top, M407 tap. The bottom uh, should be M508. And there you have it. So what I did also, I, I measured uh, the distance from the uh, end of the handlebar to where the brake perch is sitting, uh, as well as from the clutch perch, so that I have an idea uh, how far apart they should be, okay? That I failed to mention it in part one of the installation, that uh, it, uh, good consideration when you do this job too, is whether you want to swap the controls out with the jet pram button controls for the street legal or the track legal whichever uh, one you prefer but it's also a good time to decide whether you want to install those or not uh, they're a little bit expensive on on uh, in my opinion so i'm gonna set that and do it at a lot of later time but be aware though that once you install the grip that's it it's gonna be permanent and if you want to install the uh, jet pram later on, you would have to uh, remove the grip. As far as I know, it doesn't come detached uh, as that. So do um, make that uh, consideration as well. So now uh, we're gonna remove the uh, control housing here of the uh, handlebar. I already pre, uh, I guess, loosened the, the, the uh, bolt here and I'm going to gently rest it on the side of the bike you can see here I have a towel just to protect it from scratching the uh, uh, the paint simply put this away in this my box here collecting box I'm going to do the same for uh, this clutch now we're going to need to lose this um, bolt above the uh, triple plate be careful because it's gonna be uh, talking and dropping so So you can see it's, it's already dropping down so it, 
it put pressure on the bolt so you want to adjust it so that you can remove it easily so be careful with that i'm going to rest it a little bit here put this away oh it fell now what i'm going to do and i think this one can be removed or not maybe not okay uh, so i'm going to just slowly removing uh, just shift it one side so that the cable doesn't extend beyond what it needs to and remove that uh, and go ahead and remove it. This is a good time to also clean all the dirt that accumulated uh, over the years. Yeah, making sure nothing is uh, rubbing anything. And there you have it. So this is now removed. And you can see the pre-drill holes here. I don't need this, but I will put it somewhere safe on the ground so that I don't kick it. Now you are left with this uh, uh, bottom here. Now I have not yeah, so to remove this, you have to go underneath the, uh, the bolt here. And I believe it's an M6. Uh, just as with the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that. But before I do, I want to show you how to remove this uh, semi-automatic um, uh, suspension here for those who have uh, new bikes or have them on you. Uh, so it's very straightforward. You see this rubber uh, housing here? You just clip it and slide it forward and right there there should be a clip that you can easily uh, remove it from the control so, so yeah so there's a clip behind um, the, the uh, connector there all you got to do is press it in and gently pull up forward yes so and you want to be very careful with the uh, electronics, the wiring there. You don't want to be completely removed that from the wire. There you go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and remove the bottom bolt. Uh, again, M6, I believe. Uh, so you can see the handlebar is back uh, uh, installing. But uh, I came to realize that um, in order to remove this main, uh, um, I guess, triple plate uh, bolts there, uh, you gotta have some leverage on be able to torque it to loosen it. Uh, so I uh, install back the handlebar, the bolts here, and to give me a leverage. Now, instead of uh, removing the, um, um, the riser from the bottom up, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove First, the triple plate. Then, once that is free, I'm able to leverage that and be able to remove the riser um, bushing here. Now, to remove the um, triple plate bolt, you need an M14 uh, or hex 14 in this case, both sides exactly into there. And with leveraging to be able to just get it there so i did a little bit of uh, losing it already so that is my plan of attack for this one now and uh, yeah it's all loose so we should be able to uh, remove them okay uh, with that we're going to proceed with removing the top of the uh, uh, riser bar to remove the um, Handlebar. The one thing you want to uh, take into consideration and be careful is to not over torque uh, because you know the, uh, the stainless steel onto some of the aluminum uh, metal could easily strip that uh, uh, thread. So be very careful not to over uh, torque. I tend to do everything uh, by hand so you have a feel of how much uh, uh, pressure you want to put to remove or uh, tight, tighten the uh, bolt. And by the way, the bolt underneath 
uh, of the uh, triple plate for the riser is an, uh, an M10 on an M8. Put this gun into a safe place so that you don't knock it over. All right, so I also already removed this uh, two uh, bolts here and already loosened this. And I believe you have to completely remove it in order to remove the trooper plate. Now be careful, there are some zip tie below for the electronic cable. So when you do remove the uh, uh, triple plates be very careful and be gentle with it and not yanking it and pull out the electronics or destroying that So keep this in a safe place also a good time to uh, clean it There you go, you should be able to slide it uh, Be very careful with this uh, Connector you don't want to put pressure on that and buckle it And I gently, maybe I'm losing a bit more. Uh, you will notice that you have to also remove the key, uh, ignition key here, which is attached to the uh, triple plate. Uh, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna keep it all one piece because that means I have to redo it again uh, onto it. So I want to keep it at that. Just make sure I have room to uh, um, navigate. Well, it looks like I'm running into a, a snag. And uh, major setback. You see the two screw M6 millimeter underneath the clamp to remove the uh, riser for the bar. I stripped it. And so I'm trying to find ways to remove that, but I'm struggling. Uh, try to remove the ignition away from the triple clamp. That's anti-theft proof. After searching on the internet, I give up. And then the... Uh, Super clamp stuck right now. So I have to find a way to uh, overcome this. I got the torch ready. So let's see how.